Hello, and we're back. Uh, Twilight 2000 today. Uh, we will continue adventures. Uh, so where did we leave off? We left off with our three surviving a midnight attack from wolves, from hungry wolves, hungry like the wolf. Uh, fighting them off. Uh, at the end of the encounter, Doc looked after everyone, uh, consuming medical packs. And the only person who still was covered in cuts and bruises, well, they're all covered in cuts and bruises, but uh, still feeling the aches was uh, Staff, who uh, still has three uh, hit points uh, taken away from uh, his maximum of five. So they didn't finish the night's sleep. It's begun raining, and I don't know whether you'll be able to hear it, but it's actually raining quite a bit outside at the moment, which is quite, you know, apt scene setting. So it began raining during the middle of the night. I looked up a few things between the last game and this game. Uh, anytime they get hit on a piece of armor and damage goes through that armor, we're meant to do an armor ablative t ablation test. You roll a d6. If you get a one, i.e. one of the misses uh, on the dice, then the armor goes down by one point. Uh, so we didn't do that. So we might start off by just doing for everyone can do that on their, I think everyone got a hit on their chest and uh, Robert got hit once on the head, but I can't see, I mean, they all got some damage. I just don't think teeth could do that to a Kevlar helmet and a Kevlar vest. I don't think teeth will do it. So we might not do it for this, but we will remember from now on if they get shot, then we should do that because uh, every time armor takes damage, it reduces its uh, viability to take further damage. It can be get repaired on a tech roll, but I don't think anyone has tech. Uh, you can recover one point of damage per shift of rest or sleep, no matter what the shift is. And sleep deprivation uh, is after one day of no sleep, they are all suffering from sleep deprivation, uh, which means they will all take one stress in the morning. As soon as you do a shift's worth of sleep, sleep deprivation goes and they can start to recover stress, but they can't recover stress while sleep deprived. Uh, okay. So they will wake up in the morning. The first thing we will do in the morning, and we'll do this every morning, is we will do their, developing their character, their experience every morning. So we will not have the uh, taking a XP for participating in the game. We will do all the other questions uh, that we'll run through each morning. So the first one, did you participate? Not doing that. Did you follow your moral code despite significant risk to yourself or your group? I mean, I think they all attempted to follow their moral code with that ambush. Uh, I think the uh, uh, Doc and Jane in not wanting uh, to leave the ambush there. I don't know if any of them uh, had significant risk to themselves or the group, but they, I tried to play them also as they did. So I'm going to give myself one XP for everyone. Aren't I kind? I know. Uh, did you risk or sacrifice something significant to realize your big dream? I, I suppose the only person who really did, I mean, we've got get home with some humanity left, uh, keep your humanity and get home to see home again. It is both Jordan and Julian. So not really keep my team alive and get them home. So I think that Robert, the operator actually did because he got, got into, he didn't risk anything, but kind of he risked uh, uh, his sort of uh, standing with the group by arguing not to go in, that it was too risky and to get them all to the border. So I'm gonna give him two XP That's a total of two. Uh, did you travel through? So they all get one because they all travel through one hex. Did you overcome one or more violent event? Yes, they did. So they all get another one. So three, three, so he's got four. Did you risk your life for the PC who is your buddy? I don't think any of them really risked their lives at the time. Uh, Jane did attempt to go and help uh, Doc. We did have Jane do that uh, because Doc needed the assistance. Uh, but So I think I might give Jane uh, one additional uh, for that, which means that we've got 
uh, Jane and Robert have four XP and uh, Doc has three. So we would then go through our shift process. Let's move this and replace that with the map and I can remind everyone where we are. So, uh, we are here in the forest. Our intention is to try and either get to Kepno or get across the river. So we might be able to just go across the river. Uh, we might be able to see if we can traverse it. We haven't got to the river yet, so I haven't looked the river up. Should be easier. So uh, we will continue. So we can move one hex per shift during this, and then we could possibly make our way down and have a look, see if we can traverse it. It looks quite big, see if we can traverse it. Uh, probably not, then we could either, we don't want to head up here, so possibly we'll start heading down this way uh, to this bridge to see if we can get across the bridge, or if not, we might be able to swim, possibly swim across or uh, create some form of raft. There might be a boat along the, the, the shoreline that we can steal. Once we get to there, uh, I will Google it and have a look at what the, the boats, the, the river's like. If there are boats and stuff down there, then we will maybe attempt to steal a boat. First off, uh, in the morning, we will work our through, way, way through uh, the morning. So it is the morning of the 20th of April. So the first thing we'll do is we, what we know is, is, is it started because this is uh, this is what historical records show that uh, we had thunderstorms on the 20th of April 2000 in this area of Poland. So uh, thunder and rain. So it's going to be uh, bad weather, which means that our recon rolls take a hit due to that. So they'll take a hit on recon and anything to do with ranged combat. So it's in the morning and we have rain. Now, as Robert is injured, we might have it that uh, Robert will be allowed to sleep in the morning shift. Now, who's got the best? I think, I think Jane has the best Jane has a recon of C and intelligence of C. Uh, Julian has an intelligence of B, recon of D. So potentially with two D8s, Jane is best to keep watch. So maybe, let's see what, so maybe we will definitely let uh, uh, staff to sleep uh, for this morning, which means that staff will not be sleep deprived and will not take the stress of one, but will uh, heal one stress and one uh, injury, which will then put him in normal. Now, Jane, Jane isn't injured, but Jane is going to keep watch. And then what can we have Doc do this morning? Doc could just rest. We've got resting can be done by moving in fact, un unless Doc will sleep as well, which means that only Jane will be suffering from stress and be sleep deprived. All right, it's a bit boring, but we'll do that. And then Jane is going to keep watch. Uh, and as we normally do, I'll move this now. As And then we'll move off next, next turn. As we normally do, we will do our recon roll first to then see if uh, Jane can see what's coming. Uh, I think I said D8, 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 but it is raining and raining means, I've got it over here on my uh, screens, which I'll, which you should have seen a photo in last game. Uh, heavy rain, so it started to rain quite heavy, which is a minus one for recon, which gives her a D6. Uh, she gets no successes. Well, we know how that went last time. Okay, uh, so our process is whether we know it's raining, assign task, we will draw an encounter card. Okay, let's cut that. And our encounter card is, oh, okay. All right. My kill, my meat. Hunters have just killed a moose and are carving up the carcass. 
All right, so, so they're in the woods in that area. Uh, so the area we stopped last time, we're in the woods. Jane is keeping watch badly because she found her rolls. Uh, because of the heavy rain, visibility in hexes on the map is 20 hexes. Uh, one second, I'm going to grab a map. So visibility on the map is 20 hexes. Now, that is one of the maps that they, they give to use. That is 17 hexes across. So that means the visibility, uh, you couldn't see all the way down that road uh, because of the rain. So I would imagine like even 20 hexes seems a long top, long way for, for heavy rain. Uh, so we will say visibility in hexes, yeah. So, so let's think, so what is it? So Jane is standing watch. Uh, they're fashioned uh, as best out of ponchos, the best that's shelter from the rain to allow Robert and uh, uh, Doc some sleep. Uh, there's a gunshot uh, out, outside uh, the area, uh, which uh, startles Jane, who catches Jane unawares. So Jane as a private would probably panic and out of the two, well, let's see, let's do our role uh, to see, to see, oh no, no, this isn't a combat stress situation. So she is going to wake up Doc, uh, who she'll go to first because she knows Doc best. And then Doc will wake up Robert. Now we should be okay as long as we don't get into combat. If we don't get into combat, then this won't be much to worry about. Uh, food wise, so so Robert wake up. Uh, what 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 is it? Uh, no, not Harmug. What is it? What? Uh, there's a gunshot. So uh, Jane had a gunshot. Woke me up. I've woken you up. All right. What kind of gun? Sounds like a shotgun. All right. So uh, did you go check? No, should I? So uh, Robert will move out into the woods towards where Jane has directed. Uh, Robert having a recon of B and intelligence of A, being a D12 and a D10. I reckon, so it says recon, so that's for spotting, but I reckon that would mean it would give them their hard, so, so Robert gets no successes <laughs> uh, as he's moving through. Hunters, stand, Hunter. Hunters have an intelligence of C, that's a D8 and a recon of C, which is a D8. Uh, so as uh, Robert is moving through on his own with them quite a way back, so they're not coming with him. Uh, Robert has taken his handgun, not his sniper rifle, and he's moving through the bush, uh, the bush, the forest, to try and scout it out. He has accidentally come side on to them, uh, so they're, they're in a little clearing. He's come side onto them, uh, unawares. He's trying to locate where they are in the rain with the wet, and he hears off to his right hand side uh, some Polish. Uh, let's roll his intelligence. Uh, two hits. Uh, so, and so that's him understanding, and we'll say, he, oh, he's got two hits for understanding. We'll we'll do a broken a broken English. Uh, conversation he hears stop where you are what do you want uh, and he'll turn and go all right fella I was just looking to see what the noise is are you are you one of those soldiers you a NATO soldier yeah uh, I think there's a table over here to find out what sort of uh, attitude they've got okay what we're going to do is we're going to turn one of this, these over and so then we've got, there's either violence, power, or wealth, or fellowship, and then we've got different bits. So we've got uh, a spade, 
three of spades. Okay. So this that, that's weak power. So this guy is going to want to stay in control of this conversation and he's going to basically say, all right, uh, so these woods are not yours. This woods is out of your, this is our hunting territory. We have the hunting rights for these woods. We've agreed it with the area. The hunting woods be between me and my brother. This is where we hunt. If you want to hunt somewhere, move away. Go away. All right, fella. We don't want any problems. We just heard a shot and we just want to know what it is. Leave. Go away. All right. We're just, we're just basically going to sleep and then we're going to move out. Go back to your camp and then leave. I, 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 we don't want you here. You are not wanting here. We didn't want you in our country. I don't want you in our woods. Get out. All right. Uh, he's going to do a quick persuasion to, to try and just uh, alleviate this dude. Uh, no, so it, 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 but he didn't roll a foul. So the, the, get out of the woods. We're going to take our catch back. And if we're coming back into these woods and if we find you, then we will deal with you. All right. Uh, so Robert is going to head back. Uh, Robert's going to tell <laughs> tell the, the pair of them what's going. So what does that say? So it said hunters have just killed a moose. They're carving up the carcass. They're protective of their prey and can threaten or even attack the PCs if they feel cornered. One of the hunters suffers from pneumonia. Well, they didn't get close enough. So Robert heads back. The hunters will clean their prey and then leave. The morning clicks on to I don't know about ten o'clock. Staff says he reckons it's so. Uh, staff heals one hit point. Uh, is there a little thing for sleep deprived? There is. Uh, so staff and uh, Doc are not sleep deprived. Uh, Jane is sleep deprived and has one stress because of that. So they will. Uh, pack up their stuff in the rain, uh, they're sodden, they're feeling really uh, unhappy, and they will move, use this shift to, uh, they're probably gonna move, if we move them, if they could continue trying to move this way to try and come around, but that keeps them in the woods, which means there's a probability that those, those hunters will be coming out this, and so no matter what they encounter, uh, if I was DMing this and the, the party decided to, you know, the, the group decided to stay in the woods, I would have those hunters come out and hunt for them and then ambush them. Maybe going and getting their mates or other family members to clear these woods of these NATO because they don't want all the game being taken. Uh, so we will say that they're, if, oh, Robert would probably want to be safe, but moving across the the, the, the wildlands, maybe out, out this way. So, so Robert's going to say, look, we can stay in the woods, which is safe for us. We're not going to get spotted by anyone. But they were not happy with us being here. They're bound to come back. So I'm going to say we head south down here because at least we can then catch up with that road and we can move along. And then we can come around and have a good old butchers at the, the river before it's time for us to actually try and cross the bridge. Or we can go and nick a boat from somewhere, all right? So they will move down from here, here, avoiding the woods and trying to avoid uh, an encounter with those hunters again. Uh, so this is our day shift. Uh, we will say it's thundering all day. Uh, so it's pelting down with rain. They are uh, feeling uh, a bit down that it's, it's raining so bad. Uh, so we will have uh, staff. They've all packed up their stuff. They're going to traipse through the muddy fields, uh, moving into that hex. Uh, staff is going to attempt to keep watch. Uh, D12, D10, dropping down to two D10s because of the heavy rain and the lightning. Uh, staff gets no hits. So we're moving across country, 
trying to stay as low profile as possible. What have we got? This is road and daytime. So because it's road and we're moving cross country, we don't have this encounter. So now we have moved across this bit. So I am going to do an oracle. And if we get a negative, a, quite an extreme negative, the hunters are going to turn up and tell us to bugger off. Uh, what do we got? We've got diamonds, which is positive. So we've got quite a positive. So the hunters don't encounter us and we don't encounter the hunters during this shift. So that was our day shift. Now we're moving into the evening shift. Now, this is where I might have messed this up yesterday. So if we move our evening shift from, uh, if we move our evening shift from here to here, uh, it might not give us enough time that everyone gets to have a sleep. Now, Jane needs to sleep. So it makes it less interesting, but we would then have, let's have, we, instead of moving here, we will set up camp. I mean, this is, we ha I haven't played this before. So this type of hex crawl being simulationist and, and crunchy <laughs> may not be the most gung-ho every session. Uh, so during our evening shift, I think we're gonna have, only one character can roll for making camp, but others can help. I think we're gonna have, Robert is gonna make camp. Julian is going to, because Robert's probably got the best survival skill, I'll double check. So one of them's gonna make camp, survival skill. One of them's gonna cook that wolf meat from yesterday. And one of them is gonna keep watch. So cooking, I think that's a survival skill as well. If you wanna make a camp harder to spot, roll recon right after your survival roll and note down the result, your recon result, okay. Cooking is roll survival. No matter if you succeed or not, your rations meat da, 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 is turned into domestic food rations. However, if you fail, anyway, it's the food must make a stamina roll. Oh, great, okay. So, evening. Uh, still thunder and rain. Staff is going to set camp. Doc is going to cook. Jane is going to watch. So first off, we will do our watch recon roll, which for Jane. So Jane's going to try and uh, do her best because she really doesn't want everyone to get caught out. Uh, so we've got a D10 and a D6. Dropping to a D8, D6 because of the rain. Uh, Jane can, has no hits, so a fail. Then we have a staff is going to try and set a camp up. D12, D8. So survival. Uh, two hits. Uh, two hits, which I'm not too sure what that means, but we'll look it up. And now we are gonna have Julian will attempt to cook this meat. Now uh, he doesn't have survival, but he does have a D10 for intelligence. Uh, a hit. So we have two sets of Russians that are cooked, which we will consume both. And then we only need one more set of Russians for consuming rations, so that means everybody is eaten for, for this day. Uh, we do have to get water, but maybe, is that is that what foraging? Edible plants must be done. Foraging might allow us to refill a water, but, but we, all, we have enough water for now. We can do that whilst traveling. We can search for water tomorrow. So three lots of water get consumed. Uh, we'll do that as in the evening. Camp, oh, recon roll for the for a hidden camp. We have one hit, recon roll, uh, hidden. So that means that the, uh, for the, we've got two things if, so we know that Jane failed the, her watch. Uh, so whoever we roll the encounter, if we encounter it, there's a possibility that they will walk past our camp because, uh, uh, Robert built it so well. So the encounter for our evening on the 20th of April uh, is a road. 
or outside day or night. An area where a big tank battle was taking place months ago. There is much unexploded audience in the area and scrounging here requires a recon roll. Failure triggers a blast. Most vehicles are damaged beyond repair, but with a successful tech roll, the PCs find a T-72 that is inoperable but can be repaired. Uh, so, all right. So whilst setting up camp uh, in this area, uh, they've noticed that there's lots of debris and detritus around the area, just on in this little edge. Uh, and it's clear that on the way either to or from a Calance, uh, up here or maybe it's here maybe there's this town here maybe it's like one of these little towns and there was a battle a tank battle occurred in the fields out here and so what we're doing is we are setting so uh so we had all right let's do let's let's get let's have on this unless we're gonna have a, a, a staff blowing himself up no nope, we've got three successes uh, so we're not going to scrounge or anything. What it is is we're using the tank rots uh, to to set our camp. So uh, that's why staff has hidden it so well. So he's used a bit of camouflage. We've got a natural dip, so we didn't need to dig down the dip. He's created a nice roof on the top. It can't be seen quite easily from outside, uh, but we can see all the ruts and there's various bits of ordnance, uh, and there is right not that far away from us. Uh, a knackered looking T-72. Uh, the only problem is, is none of us, like I said, none of us have got tech. So we, we are not equipped or skilled or have the tools to repair a T-72. And the team even doesn't know it's repairable because they don't have the skills or the knowledge. It just looks like a bit of a F tank uh, that's took a bit too much damage. They don't realize that with a bit of work, they could get the, the uh, uh, tracks back on and get it get it mobile again uh, so that's that's that evening so we've got a nice camp we're all okay so that night uh, so for the night shift uh, Jane is definitely sleeping to get rid of uh, her sleep deprivation uh, Doc so Doc so if Doc keeps watch that gives Robert a chance to heal again because Robert gets to rest again. Uh, so Doc is going to suggest that because it's raining and the camp is so good, uh, it's going to go, look, in my, in my professional opinion, you need to rest. You may be the most experienced. You may be able to stay awake for days on end. You may be trained how to do that. You may have special tablets in your pocket that you can take, caffeine tablets, but I suggest you sleep tonight, Robert. I suggest that you try to get some rest and I will keep watch. I mean, I, I, will, I won't fall asleep and I'll keep watch. <laughs> if, he, if he fails, I'm going to make Doc fall asleep. So Doc is going to keep watch and then Robert will sleep. So in Robert sleeping, so Jane's, well, we'll I won't tick anybody's stuff off just yet because we don't know what happens. So with Doc keeping watch, did I say he had recon i did didn't i so yeah doc's got a d10 for his intelligence and he has a d6 for recon it's uh fiddling down with rain which is not swears it's a proper expression good old doc uh he's got he successfully had keeps watch uh one hit so now we will see what encounter we have i think we've been going a about half an hour, probably. So I might do, it might be a short one, I might do a bit more, we'll see what happens with this. Otherwise, we will, I mean, there's no point doing uh, experience to this bit because we won't get any yeses. So we'll just roll on to the next day. Now, I mean, we could do it just for the sake of it, but it's gonna be no, 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 no. And we're not getting one XP for, for participation. There's, there's no awards for participation. What do we have? Ah, uh, the hunters. All right. So, uh, so we've got uh, uh, those hunters have come back looking for us. My kill, my meat. So we've got off. Uh, yeah, this says in the daytime or static camp. 
we're actually going to use this, even though we shouldn't have this happen. Uh, uh, we've, we've got, see, we've got, so one of the things that you can also do is we can, we, we pull a back card and this card is whether it's positive or negative. Now, I know the story of this. I've already thought in my head, uh, negative, sweet, because uh, that came up as a clubs. So that would be negative. So basically, uh, even though this says it's PCs minus one, which would be two, it's not. Uh, as uh, everyone's sleeping, it's quite late at night, it's raining and in the lightning, uh, uh, Julian looks out, uh, keeping watch. Uh, I, I tell you what, let's roll, let's roll for those hunters again. What was their, our hunters? Uh, was intelligence a C, so that's a D8. And a recon of a D8, which would be a D6 and a D8 because of the rain. Uh, they get one hit, but that one hit doesn't beat. So uh, Julian spots them, but they don't beat the one hit for uh, Robert's camouflaging of the tank. So they would need to get two hits to beat it. Uh, so they wander quite close. They seem to think they notice something uh, and they're heading towards it, which is the camp. And because of the lighting and the rain distracted, but uh, Julian, can Julian understand them? Uh, what would be a listen? Listen would be recon, wouldn't it? So he's trying to listen. Uh, D8, D6. Uh, yep, he can hear what they're saying. And then we'll just do an intelligence roll. Uh, but he doesn't quite get everything they're saying. Uh, he thinks he's pretty sure that what would that be? Let's do, let's do, let's give him an empathy check. Let's, so that he's going to try and read their body length. Yeah, a hit. So he can't understand what they're saying, but they definitely look like they're looking for something. They don't look like they're hunting because they're not really being very animal stealthy and they're a bit grouped up for what, for what Julian knows of hunting. These hunters are out looking for us. There's four hunters. Actually, I'm going to quickly write this down, so I'll cut this bit. But I'm not going to cut me saying this bit. So I cut that bit. Uh, so what 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 I've just thought is we now have we now have a bit of a continuous story. We've got the, these hunters. This family is looking for us. So they've come out tonight. They might come out tomorrow. They might come out other times, and probably they will keep looking for us until we've got across this river. Once we've got over this river. Uh, we can take it that they're no longer going to be a threat to us uh, as we start to edge our way towards uh, towards this way. So in the morning, uh, Julian will tell everybody else uh, that those hunters were coming out. Uh, Robert will go and have a scout around the area. Uh, but we will have, so what have we got? Uh, so Julian uh, did sleep. So Julian slept in the morning yesterday. Uh, but hasn't slept all day. Jane slept at the night shift and Robert slept twice. So what we'll do is in the morning, we will say that Robert has dealt, so one of his uh, cuts and bruises has come off. Jane feels less tired and less stressed. And we've got a new day. So today is now the 21st of April 2000 wasn't isn't that that is the 21st is it's Good Friday so uh, uh, Doc is going to Julian will wish wish everyone a, a Good Friday so morning morning shift uh, Jane slept last night. Uh, Doc slept in the morning, so Doc doesn't need sleep. Doc will need to sleep during this day. Uh, everyone's eaten. Everybody's drunk yesterday. So I think they're going to get up and do an early march uh, down towards, and this might be this, ah, oh, down to the river. All right, so they're going to do an early march down to the river, in which case what we'll do is uh, I'm going to quickly go and Google what that river looks like. I'll, I'll be back. All right, I'm back. Okay, so it is, the the river's called the Prosna. Uh, this may be said wrong, I do apologize. P-R-O-S-N-A, I will put up an, uh, a little photo of it. 
probably here. Uh, it looks very much like uh, a river near where I used to grow up called the River Lee. Uh, it's it's wide enough that it it's not you know it's not anything that you or I normally when you're going out for a walk in the countryside you wouldn't look at it and go oh let's get across the other side by wading through it. But if you had to, you could waterproof your stuff and just sort of use it as a flotation. You could get across it. It's not difficult. It's not fast running. Probably there'd be the odd boat down there, but it's not that tricky. So we're going to say that they know this about the Prosna. Uh, and in which case, it's probably for them being semi on the run. They could attempt to get past this bridge. That's quite... Let's see, make sure you can see this. Uh, that's quite a big road. It's like a main road with a main bridge. Uh, they, they definitely have played some liberties with this map because it took me quite a bit to find the Prosna. If like, have a look, try, Google it. The, the river is the Prosna. Uh, uh, so, so the dimensions here are definitely not to scale. But we will probably uh, travel through here. Uh, it's morning. We could maybe move down to here and then uh, we will attempt to get across the Prosna today, uh, probably by this evening, and then we can camp up and try and dry our stuff. Uh, uh, hopefully, the weather will hopefully turn. Ooh, it doesn't. <laughs> uh, hopefully the weather will turn, and then we can dry our stuff the next day. So, so all right, so here's my plan. Uh, we're all a bit rested. So uh, what we're gonna do is we will try and get out of this area. So we're gonna come down here, uh, move through these woods today uh, during this morning, uh, and then maybe this afternoon, we'll see if we can get across that river and then camp up tonight on the other side of the river. Does that all sound good? We're not gonna go by road because that might be a bit tricky. Uh, all good with everyone? Uh, I've never, never done much river crossing says Jane, I'm, I'm not the strongest of, you know, not the strongest of swimmers, uh, but she says that in an American accent. Uh, some like Midwest, like not near the outside, so where, where it wouldn't be, so inner, where it wouldn't be common to go swimming. We'll say that, that Jane, that Jane uh, isn't a strong swimmer. I'm gonna say that, not strong swimmer. And then we can use that. I just made that up. Uh, look, you'll be fine, love. Don't worry about it, you will be fine. We'll give you little floaties. Don't worry about it. It'll be fine, mate. So that's what we're going to do this morning. We will attempt to go across. So we, I mean, at some point, we're going to have to try and hit somewhere for food and water. At least when we get down to the river, we can redo water. Uh, but at the moment, we are... We probably have enough food for the 21st of April. So that food got consumed. So we have between us, so Robert will, will do an assessment of food. We've got four, five, one, two, three, four. Robert's got a lot of food on him. Four, six. We have six, six days worth of food, so we can go for two days. We have enough food for two days and then we're gonna to have to go do some scavenging. Uh, we might, so if we've got enough food for two days, we may be able to, <laughs> so, look, my automatic, my automatic idea is that what we'll do is we'll go robbing, all right? We'll find a little village, little town. Oh, I've got an idea. They're all gonna be in church on Sunday. We'll go robbing houses. We can't do that. We can't do that. Look, we'll discuss it later. But for now, we're on the march. So, uh, is that a bad indictment of me? That that's my first thought. Uh, so we've got thunder and rain for now. Uh, next, we will roll to see if it gets a bit better for the, for the midday shift. Uh, uh, so what we'll have is we've got staff on watch, dock march, Jane watch. It's raining, so we have a minus on our recon. So we will be a D10 and a D10, instead of a D12 and a D10. Uh, we have two hits. Uh, 
two hits. So we are traipsing across uh, the, the fields and then we're coming into this wooded area over here. It's quite rainy, it's Good Friday. Maybe the hunters might come out. Uh, they came out last night. We are now, what well, we are on morning shift. Morning shift, so probably they're sleeping. Uh, it's this afternoon that I'll move that, I'm moving the map down one square. Third little marker. Uh, so our encounter is, uh, it's a road encounter, uh, kill zone, a silver Soviet, it's got the number, number of opponents is PC times one. Isn't PC times one PC? Uh, it could have just said PC, it didn't need the times one. Soviet forces have set up an ambush in order to capture or kill the PCs. They spend a stretch setting it up, but this is on the road. This is daytime on the road and we're cross country. So there is there is nothing there. Uh, we're not even close to the road. So no, no encounter during that stretch. We, we get into those woods uh, un un unaccosted and we can see the edge over here. Uh, uh, Google it, so then you'll see it looks like this. Uh, so we are now going to attempt to traverse the river uh, and get to the other side. So I'm going to quickly look up whether it mentions how to do stuff like that. Okay, so I had a bit of a think. So what I'm thinking is that to traverse the river isn't it, like it's a, it's a task. It's a non-trivial task. So to say they traverse the river and they clear into this hex doesn't feel right to me in one sort of shift. So I think this shift, which is the day shift, uh, they are going to spend the shift traversing the river. So technically staying in this square, but they will be on the other side of the river. So then they were according to this map, they're here, they're not, they're in this square, but on the other side of the river. So then they would need to move into this square uh, during the next day. So their day shift is gonna be spent trying to get across this river, which means the hunters could potentially find them if they're in the bad luck. Now, this is their intuition and their sixth sense, i.e. their survival ability, because if they had taken that bridge, that's where that ambush encounter is. It's on that bridge. So they are going to spend this traversing here. So what we might have is we might have uh, Oh, let's roll, let's quickly roll for weather. Uh, it, it gets, fog starts to come in, which actually does happen. Uh, so, staff is going to attempt to do survival to make a raft. So staff is gonna try and build a raft or get some, or try and get some rope together to scavenge around, get some rope, build a raft, waterproof their stuff to give them the ability to get across. So basically I will give them all, uh, they, they, they will all get bonuses plus whatever successes staff rolls on their traversing the river. If they fail, we'll work out what happens if they fail, if they fail in traversing the river, which they will do. Uh, next is the evening shift, which they'll do as part of this. So we'll do that all as part of this. They're, they're all doing that stuff, stuff at the same time. Jane is going to keep watch and Doc is going to forage to refill the water because they're at the river. So they're at the river. So uh, Doc is going to refill their water. Uh, staff is going to attempt to build a raft, get them to cross. Uh, and then we'll see see what happens the other bit. So uh, Jane keeps watch. Uh, so Jane keeping watch. I'm going to have to try and remember these. Is a D8 D8, which is a D8 D6 because of the rain. Uh, no hits. Uh, no hit. Uh, staff in the fog is going to attempt to build some form of waterproof raft which is a survival which is a d12 d8 uh, no hits okay so they don't get pluses no hit and then 
dock. He's going to try and refill the water bottles, which is a D10 for uh, survival. Uh, no hits. Uh, they have an awful time. So that means that they will get, each of them gets one, one water, so not more than one water. So water, water, water. Now they all are going to have to make a mobility check to get over the river. Uh, so staff has a D10 and a D6. Uh, no hits, okay, so uh, he might take some damage in taking in some water. Uh, we've got a D10 and a D8 for Julian. Uh, Julian also might take some water. And then we've got a D12 and a D8 for Jane. Uh, Jane gets across fine. Uh, so we are gonna say that staff takes, let's say D2, one, two, three. So staff takes two points. So staff uh, and Doc Julian. So basically what we have is their, their raft has come. Uh, so so uh, staff built the raft and has waterproofed some of their gear. Uh, he did Jane's fine and Jane uh, with strength uh, started to get across. So halfway across because of the fog, ah, halfway across because of the fog, uh, uh, staff and Doc get get uh, thrown by where they are, uh, lose uh, uh, grip on the, the raft that they're using to help get all their kit across. So staff put all their kit on the raft and they're paddling on next to it. Uh, they get, they, they're knackered from the pedaling and uh, they've taken on lots of water, their clothes get sodden. Uh, Jane, who is uh, strong and Jane has got high strength and high agility. So Jane is fit as, uh, Jane actually is fit as, Jane is the fittest out of all of them. Uh, she gets across fine and starts to drag them up and he's kind of a bit chuckling and going, you old men, all this, you old men, you just can't take it, can you? You can't hack it. Why did you even sign up? Why did you even enlist? She drags them over. Uh, now, what, what encounters them who are completely oblivious of what's going on is... Uh, it's another road encounter. Everything has a price, marauders on the road. So nothing, luckily for them, uh, nothing comes across. Everything's looking for them on the roads at the moment. Uh, so they are now on the other side of the river here. And I think we will leave them there. Uh, so we will leave them uh, drying themselves off and working out their evening shift for the 21st of April. So they've just crossed the Prosna. Uh, they're on the eastern bank of the Prosna, uh, but still technically in this square, which we'll remember for next time. Uh, and I'll try to film another one soon, so I don't forget. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Uh, no combat in that one, but they, they have moved from squares. Uh, I think I'm getting the hang of it. It's a bit more, more jilted and it, 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 I quite like it. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, subscribe would be awesome uh, if you can. Uh, tell me if there, uh, if you have been to Poland. Have you been to this area of Poland? Can you tell me anything about this area of Poland that I can, I can incorporate? Uh, uh, such as the rivers or anything or the culture. And I'll try and, I'll try and incorporate that in. Uh, again, thank you very much. Uh, hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you next time.